Hello friends and family, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and this is Little Tooth Adventures. Today I have another new pattern for you. I am going to show you how to make bucket hats. <laughs> Just like this. As usual, all of my patterns are available on toothandeye.com. This pattern is available in multiple sizes, as well as a couple options to customize it. Because I don't want to limit your creativity. I want to help you express it. <laughs> Although this pattern might seem a little complicated, there's a lot of things that are optional, but it just makes it look a little bit more professional. But if you just want a quick sewing project, there is a lot of stuff that you can just cut out of it. Anyways, let's get into it. Using my pattern assembly tutorial, choose your size and cut out each pattern piece. Here's where we can start to customize. You'll definitely need the top panel. Then you can choose either the classic side panel or the deep side panel. The deep side panel is more of a street fashion look. Next, choose either the classic brim or the wide brim. This will just be personal style preference. For my hat, I will be choosing a deep side panel and a classic brim. Now it's time to choose your fabric. Thicker fabrics such as broadcloth, canvas, or denim work the best. I will be using this thrifted table runner as the main body and this thrifted blanket as the lining. Adding a lining is optional, but it does help with structure. And of course, you will also need fusible interfacing. Try to only use medium to heavy weight. For the main body, cut out four brim pieces, one top panel, and two side panels. Cut out four pieces of interfacing with the brim pattern, one top panel and two side panels out of the lining. Although these pieces are optional, it does really help with structure. Now it's time to apply the interfacing. Plug in your iron and while the iron is heating up, lay out your brim pieces and the matching interfacing pieces. You're going to want to iron the interfacing to the back side of the brim pieces. Starting from one end, iron the pieces together. Now you'll have a really sturdy brim piece. Repeat this with the three remaining brim pieces. Now that all our pieces are prepped, we can begin sewing. Take the main body side panel pieces and lay them out right sides together. Do the same thing with two of the brim pieces and repeat again with the two remaining brim pieces. Now pin along the narrowest edges. Repeat those steps with the side panels of the lining. We will be sewing along these edges in the next step. Using a serger or a straight stitch, sew a quarter inch seam. We'll start with the main body side panels. Then we'll move on to the brim pieces. And then finally the lining. You should end up with four pieces like this. This next part is optional, but it'll give it that more professional look. We're going to flip all those seams open and top stitch them down. Have your needle in the far right position. Lay that seam down and to the left and line it up on the far right of the presser foot. Using that seam as a guide, top stitch it down. Once you get to the end, pop up the needle and the presser foot, pull back the threads, and then top stitch on the other side of the seam. You should end up with two parallel straight seams on either side of where the fabric joins. It should look roughly like this. 
As you can see, that original seam is now flattened on the back. Now repeat this on every seam you've sewed so far. See how those top stitches line up on either side of that joining seam. This is what you're trying to create. When doing the brim pieces, make sure you flatten the seams to the same direction. So if you've decided to flatten them to the left, make every single seam flatten to the left. This will help cut down on bulk when we sew the brim pieces together. Once that's done, go over all your pieces and make sure you didn't miss anything. This isn't really something you can fix later, so make sure you do it right the first time. Feel free to clean up all of your threads. I cut them down to about an inch so that they're not in the way later. Now take your brim pieces and line them up right sides together. Make sure the side seams are lined up and start pinning around the outside evenly. Instead of pinning right through those bulky seams, I pin on either side of them. Six to 10 pins should be enough. Just make sure the two brim pieces are laying flat against each other. Now we will sew along the outer edge of the brim. You can either use a serger or a straight stitch. Just make sure it's a quarter inch. If you cut your fabric out evenly to begin with, everything should lay down flat and you won't have any buckles. Now start flipping the brim right side out. You're going to kind of want to roll those seams a bit so that they lay flat. Line those side seams up and start pinning around the whole outside. Feel free to put a couple pins on the inside to keep that part lined up as well. This next part is optional, but it's how you sew the rings around traditional bucket hat brims. Now putting your needle in the middle position, we're going to straight stitch all along the outside of the brim. Use the side of the presser foot as a guide. You're also going to want to continue rolling that seam out so that everything lays flat.
Once you get to one of those bulky seams, feel free to use something as a wedge. I, as usual, like to use an emery board. Make sure you clip your first seam ends before you sew over them. Finish off that seam with a couple back stitches and clip your threads. Now we'll do the exact same thing, but instead this time, we will be using that seam we just made as a guide instead of the edge of the fabric. Repeat this four more times so you end up with six rings around the brim. It should look roughly like this. As you can see, this really makes the brim sturdy. Now we will assemble the rest of the hat. Grab your main top panel and side panels. Flip the side panels inside out. We're going to pin the part that swoops up to the top panel. Fold the top panel in half and pin on the creases. You'll only want one pin on either side. Now open it up and fold in half so the pins line up. Now put one pin on either side of the fold like we did before. Now you should have four evenly spaced out pins around the top panel. Put that off to the side and grab the side panels. Just a little reminder, it's really important to have that curved up part facing up. Now fold in half, lining up the seams, and pin where the sides fold over. This is marking the center between the seams. Now using the pins and the side seams as a guide, pin the top panel to the side panels. It's really important that you space the pins out evenly. Repeat this part with the lining. Now using a serger or a straight stitch, sew a quarter inch seam all along that part you just pinned. I personally find it easier to have the top panel up while doing this part. You don't have to rush this part, just take your time and make sure everything is lining up. If everything is lined up properly, you should have an even seam with no gaps or folds. It should look like this, and once flipped right side out, it should look like this. Now repeat with the lining. This next part is optional, but it does look better. We're gonna top stitch the seams we just sewed, making sure they're folded down towards the side panels and not up towards the top panel. Like we did before, make sure your needle is in the far right position. 
making sure the seam is folded down towards the left. Use the right side of the presser foot as a guide and sew all along that seam, top stitching it down. Tie your threads off on the inside. and it should look roughly like this. Repeat for both the main part and the lining. Now we only have one seam left. We're almost there, folks. If using a lining, you should have three pieces, the top part of the hat, the lining part of the hat, and the brim. Now take your lining and flip it inside out. And with your main hat body right side out, place the lining on the inside, lining up the side seams. Pin the seams together. And then using the seams as a guide, find the middle of the sides and place your pins. You can place more pins in between those, but make sure those four original pins are spaced out evenly. Now do the same thing with the brim. It is very, 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 very important that you place these pins out evenly. Now flip the main hat body up and using those four main pins as a guide, start pinning the brim to the outside. Feel free to add as many pins as you'd like at this point. Just make sure that the original four are spaced out as even as possible. Now we will simply sew that seam together. Using either a serger or a straight stitch, sew along the inside of that seam. You are sewing through many layers of fabric, so just take your time. There's no rush. When getting to those side seams, they can be quite bulky. So feel free to manually turn the hand wheel. This can help prevent needle breakage over those really thick parts.
This is optional, but I like to go over that seam again with a slightly wider seam. This just helps stabilize it even more. And if you missed any parts, this will just mow right over it. And there we go, we pretty much have a finished bucket hat. Now if you really want to make these authentic, we will add grommets for airflow. Find one of the top side seams and line up the inner lining seam with the main body seam. And pin. This might take a little bit to manipulate, so just be patient. Do this on both of the top side seams. Now moving a couple inches from where you just pinned, line up the inner and outer seams along the top edge and pin. You're basically just trying to stabilize this area so that when you apply the grommets, everything will be lined up properly. Using that side seam as a guide, measure down by about an inch and then measure out by about an inch and mark it with some sort of erasable marker or chalk. This will be where you punch the holes for your grommets. You'll want one on either side of those side seams for a total of four marks. Now using the instructions with your grommet kit or grommet press or whatever, apply your grommets right on those marks. And now you've created your very own bucket hat. Make sure you put that bad boy on and take it out into the wild. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and found it pretty straightforward. If not, always ask me questions in the comments and I will do my best to try to explain things better. The best part about this sewing pattern is really your imagination is the limit. For example, I also made this bad boy where I patchworked a bunch of denim together. This was all scraps, like if I didn't do this, it would honestly have been thrown out. That looks amazing. But you can also tell on this one, I didn't do like the rings. Because if I did the rings on this, it would have been way too hard. It would have just jammed up my machine, broke some needles. It's too much denim to sew through. But you can also use regular denim, this one, this one has the rings, and also has an actual functional pocket, just in case. And then this one, which I made out of this amazing faux, like, snake skin. Like, oh, look at that shine. Amazing. If you do end up making one of your own, don't forget to tag me on Instagram so I can see your amazing creation. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.